it's about flat as far as the opening is concerned. Very short term, I, I'm kind of, I'm still, I'm still a little bit more kind of negative. Um, but I see that this is going to give, throw up some very good buying opportunities. Nifty is currently below its 50 as well as its 100-day moving average. The idea was to share with the public sector banks, the CEOs and the MDs, what are the regulators' expectations from the uh, banking sector. The markets are down 100 points plus. It's been that way now for the last couple of hours. No improvement whatsoever. It's been a rough day, led primarily by banks, the bank nifty down about 1.8%. With some support from Larson and Tubro, though you could argue that even for Larson, this would go down as a bit of a disappointment because in the morning it looked like uh, you know, a 4 to 5% kind of day, but that hasn't happened. Markets stumbled to their lowest level in 2019. Sensex and Nifty are down 1% after a broad-based sell-off. Mid-caps take it on the chin, losing 2%. Z Entertainment and Dish TV uh, and other group stocks uh, reverse the selling pressure. This after lenders give the promoters of uh, Z three months to find a buyer for the big one, Z Entertainment. But no respite for some of the other group companies. <clears throat> High leverage concerns drive down the Adani group stocks, Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports and Adani Power see steep fall on large volumes. Escort sends down 4% even after reporting a healthy third quarter. With a 40% top-line growth, RBL Bank slides after reporting better asset quality and a 35% profit growth. Canada Bank tumbles in trade after loan growth slows to its lowest in the uh, in the three in the in three quarter in the last three quarters, even as asset quality improves. And Tata Steel sells majority stake in its Southeast Asian business to China's HBIS Group. Will use the proceeds to pare down debt. Stock ends over a percent in the red. Well, those were the top five headlines from Dalal Street on a day when we saw a lot of red on the screen. Welcome to Markets Today, Talk Back, the show where we will tell you all that happened in those six hours of trading in five headlines. I'm done with me, my colleague Prashant. Hi, Prashant. Hi, what a washout kind of a day. Absolute pain, pressures, broad basing, I mean, uh, you know, uh, no space really uh, for, the, for the bulls in to today's session. Although it did improve a little bit right at close, there was some buying which came in. We'll see if it spills over that slight bit of positive sentiment which creeped in and some buying it spills over into tomorrow's session. Over the next 30 minutes, we will of course first wrap up the day's events. We'll tell you the big stories which mattered and there were more than a few. Uh, and of course, we'll take your questions. Joining us are Ashwini Gujral on the charts to take your questions. Deepan Mehta, member BSE NSC. Deepan and Ashwini, thank you both very much for joining us here on the show. As always, we start uh, right at the beginning and take stock of what really happened. Lata. Uh, well, first, let me just describe that it was an all fall down kind of day when uh, the Nifty also lost uh, what has over the past 8, 12 weeks become a kind of a sacred range. 10,750 to 10,980. That support got broken and that trading range, uh, which has stood the test of 2019, uh, well, it's all of uh, uh, six weeks, but it stood the test, all of four weeks actually, it stood the test of that time, but now that uh, trading range is under threat. The Nifty has closed below the 10,700 mark. Uh, well, now to describe what exactly was under threat. Any promoter group that has taken funding from the mutual funds are the ones under threat. That's what the SL group did. The promoter en entity got funds from the mutual funds. Mutual funds badly bruised. And therefore, there is a bit of a worry about all those promoters. So you saw perhaps uh, the DHFL group. Uh, I mean, it's not a group, it's just one stock, but the Vadawan group has been funded. Uh, and uh, likewise, highly leveraged stocks like uh, the Adani group and even the India Bulls group, some of them uh, came out for uh, uh, a bit of selling. The mid-caps, uh, most of these are mid-cap stocks and they got pulverized badly. In fact, even in the big caps, it was IT that was the lone safe haven, so to speak. But you give us more colour stock-wise. All about stocks today, Lata, right? I mean, uh, across the board. And I'm not going to talk about sectors because, as you said, it's all uh, fall down kind of a day. So let's uh, dive straight into names, right, where there was pressure. And it was financials, private banks, PSU banks, but finan private banks and NBFCs were the main uh, pressure points. So right away uh, on your screen, Bajaj Finance, 5.5% lower. Steeply off the lows, Yes Bank, 5.5% uh, lower. 
off the lows. Bajaj Finserv, four and a quarter percent lower by close. Again, off the lows. There was ICICI Bank and Indescent Bank, which also came up. ICICI Bank actually, I think, at one point got to about 335 or so. So that also picked up from the day's lowest point. But, uh, I mean, you know, the correction in ICI, ICI is now, what, 15% or so from the recent high of about 380 or so. Now, we come to specific groups. So, Z essentially is uh, what triggered all of this on Friday. So, Z lost, what, almost 27% on Friday. It's recovered uh, about 17% today. Uh, there was Dish TV, uh, which was, uh, uh, which had also sold off quite a bit. It uh, came up. I mean, actually, Z, uh, Z's, uh, Dish TV's low today was 19 rupees. It leaves off at 24. So, you know, steep recovery there. Mm -hmm. SL Pro Pack, another group company, was up 13%. Uh, uh, now, you come to some other names as well in the group. Z Media, 19% lower. Z Learn, 7.5% lower. So, there is some recovery in certain pockets, uh, uh, stocks of the group, but in others, there is still a fair bit of pressure. Adani Group uh, was, uh, uh, you know, was, was the one which uh, got freshly beaten up. So, look at that. Adani Ports, 13% down. It was down more at one point. Actually, the low today on Adani Ports was 290. It left mm -hmm. off at 326. Adani Gas, Adani Green, uh, what the other names? I mean, actually, I could look at you could you could look at the ADG group of stocks as well. I mean, they were all down between four and six percent, but uh, these were the big ones. Okay, the uh, where, uh, the broader market, the sell-off on your screen, DHFL, uh, is 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 back in uh, the focus. I mean, 185, 11, 12 percent lower. India Bulls Finance, uh, so housing finance as a bunch, not all of it, but I mean, some of it got beaten up. HEG and Graphite, huge volumes and big sell downs again. There was Indian Bank. I mean, one of the better name, uh, better PSU banks, 8.5% lower. There was Max Financial, which was down 7%. Linde India, there was JK Paper, Intellect, and I could go on. But I think I uh, put out uh, stuff with some of the largest volumes and most traded names, which were down and out. Lata. I think anybody with an exposure to mutual funds got uh, thrammed. So, you know, you expect NBFCs and housing finance companies to have, still have a tail bit of uh, mutual fund exposure through some commercial paper or debentures, all those uh, even suspected uh, and pledged, yeah, those who have pledged shares also I think it was, were the yeah, ones it was that pledged, came. Pledged, uh, I mean, there was yeah. pledged, pledged leveraged, and high leverage, basically. Yeah, so uh, which got. Combination. Uh, take your point. Let's find out what our guests have made of uh, what was quite clearly a lot of bloodletting. Ashwini, you go first, your assessment of the day, and what does it mean for tomorrow? Well, actually, just for tomorrow, it means that possibly in the immediate term, the market may have you know, just created a short term bottom by the end of the day. Because by end of the day, it was total clean out, 200 stocks advancing, 1400 declining, you know, large stocks, Bajaj Finance, ICSA Bank, etc. Uh, falling fairly hard. So by the end of the day, we actually took some long positions hoping for uh, some amount of pullback as early as tomorrow and then you know fresh view can be taken at about uh, 10 750 to about 10 800 so uh, my sense is today even the large caps fell so that way uh, possibly the market is ready for some amount of uh, pullback which could happen with a, a gap higher so uh, but overall you know the downtrend remains and we'll have to see what sort of news flow uh, comes in uh, in terms of vote on account and global markets, etc., to see uh, whether there could be a further decline. This possibly looks like in response to the FISC, etc., that the market is uh, quickly priced in some amount of uh, uh, disappointment. Well, uh, fair enough. Um, so, fair bit of pain, uh, but uh, could there be any gain going long anywhere? Ashwini, I mean, what would you? Would, are there any longs that you would recommend at all at this point, and where? See, it appears that IT is doing very well, and uh, with that sort of perspective, something like TCS, Tech Mahindra, NIT Tech, these could be uh, you know stocks that you could buy into. I think the domestic stocks around say 10,000, 10,200, they start to look very attractive. At about uh, 10,800 to about 11,000, they kind of uh, start to peter out. Uh, I think currently till this vote and account, etc., I think financials remain under pressure and IT tries to uh, stabilize the market. Okay. 
Oh, well, with that, let's get to the first uh, corporate headline, the second headline from the day. Z Entertainment and Dish TV stocks reversed selling pressure in trade. Today, Z Entertainment gained over 14%. That is end of day. If you looked at from the bottom, it would have been a rise of about 20%. Dish TV was up close to 7% by end of day over the Friday close. This after the companies uh, struck a deal with lenders to stem value destruction and allayed investor concerns of uh, pledge shares being sold. Although this provided no respite for the other Z Group stocks. Uh, actually, let's get to Mangalam who will give us all those details. Mangalam. Well, to assuage concerns, the management of Z held a conference call in today's trading session. And here were the key takeaways that came in from there. Four important things were discussed. One, debt at the group level. Secondly, the agreement that they had with the lenders. Thirdly, the promoter's stake sale plan and also uh, the, the pledge against Z's shares itself. So first up, for the promoter's group level debt, uh, the company wasn't allow, uh, wasn't revealing a number, wasn't at the liberty to say that. But all they said was as of Friday, all the debt convenience were breached. As far as the agreement with lenders is concerned, and that was a positive, is that the, uh, the company has managed uh, to get a written a formal agreement with all the lenders to not sell further stake in event of a stock price decline and this uh, 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 extends to beyond April 2019 which is up until the company's strategic stake sale plan is likely to be carried out. That's a positive because uh, on Friday's trading session the big determinant of the fall or the big reason for the fall was this pledge shared or what was these pledge shares being invoked and talking about that uh, the promoter said 0.6% of the company's total equity was invoked in terms of pledge and promoter's stake of around 41.6% has now come down to 41% on account of the sale by pledge holders that took place on Friday's trading session. But in lieu with the agreement, in lieu of the agreement that the promoters have done with the lenders, no further promoter stake would come in for pledges. And finally, on the strategic stake sale plan, they've said the plans are on track and now they are re-engaging with all the potential suitors post Friday's decline that we've seen. But the management also assorts concerns with regards to the bargaining power, saying that because there are multiple buyers, the bargaining power still lies with C. So let's see how this goes because they also said there is no risk yet of a hostile takeover. Brokerages are cautiously positive if you must. Okay, uh, Mangalam, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, Deepan, uh, here's a question coming your way uh, on Z. Uh, Mangesh Guy Quad from Mumbai has written in. He's got uh, 560 shares of Z. His cost is 475 rupees a share. He's a long term investor, wants to know if he should continue to hold or sell, or maybe actually even buy more. What would you say, Deepan? So I think uh, <clears throat> operationally, there's not going to be much of an effect of, uh, of uh, the promoter problems in the company. And Z Entertainment is largely professionally run, so don't expect uh, any such effect on the actual performance. And mind you, the performance has been quite impressive for the last two, three quarters or so. So my advice to the investor would be to remain invested. And I think if there were further uh, downslide, downside happening in the stock, because of whatever reasons, I think because it's an ongoing uh, saga and it's not going to end just like that unless there's the actual sales stake taking place. Till that point of time, you will see the stock under pressure from point to point and high degree of volatility. So at corrections, I think you could look at uh, averaging uh, and uh, reducing the cost of holding. A very positive on the long-term prospects of uh, Z Entertainment and would like to remain invested and see how the new promoter or the new a uh, joint venture partner comes in and what their plans are and how the company then eventually uh, takes a fresh direction or uh, into the fresh growth phase. Oh, absolutely. You can <coughs> complain about the company's numbers. Uh, the standalone entity uh, had uh, a fairly decent set of third quarter numbers. With that, we come to the third headline. After the steep fall in Z Entertainment uh, shares last Friday, that's uh, uh, on 25th, Owing to concerns around promoter pledges and the group's high leverage, the market today uh, sought out the Adani Group stocks. Uh, well, we don't have a, explain, uh, a sure short explanation. It is possible that the selling was because of similar concerns, you know, high leverage and possible pledging. Adani Ports and Adani Power were the worst affected. Uh, Adani promoters own 62% of uh, shares in Adani Ports and the proportion of promoter shares pledged stands at 45.5%. Worries about leverage in their listed thermal power business, uh, Adani Power, has prevailed for some years now. 
Adani Ports fell over 12 percent, but Adani Power was down 17 percent. Adani Gas and Adani Green were also down 7 and 10 percent. Okay, uh, we've got a, a question coming in. Bhushan Kasat from Jalgaon has written in with a question on Adani Ports. Remember, Adani Ports is the one which is the cash cow for the group now. Uh, he's been holding 105 shares of Adani Ports. His cost is 390 rupees a share. He's a long-term investor and wants to know what he should be doing now. Uh, Deepan, again, uh, a specific question on uh, Adani Ports. What would you advise? You don't have a positive view on the group or Adani Ports per se, and I would look at opportunities to exit out of the stock. Unlike uh, Z, which is a fabulous business, a great brand, and uh, reasonably high return on investment, Adani Port doesn't fall in that category. And although the investor is sitting on a loss at this point of time, uh, maybe not today or tomorrow, but whenever some sort of uh, semblance returns to all these counters, you should look at an exit strategy for Adani Ports, not very optimistic of the company really growing its business consistently over a long period of time and a capital intensive business. So in that respect, the ROC, ROIs uh, should remain low going forward. So negative on the view, negative view on the stock, look for exit opportunities. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, any of the Adani Group stocks uh, at all that look interesting to you? Uh, Ashwini, would you play any of them? You know, that's a very standard market response that they have clubbed certain groups together. Andani, Adani, Anil Ambani, uh, you know, all kinds of groups which have huge amount of leverage. And whosoever has big leverage gets into trouble sooner or later. We know what happened with JP. Similarly, you know, the NBFCs uh, where, you know, debt is a problem. Uh, all of those things start to get clubbed together. When, now, whether there is a problem in the broader, wider market, that we'll find out. But for the moment, uh, these are groups which will remain weak. <coughs> Fair enough. Uh, Latha, there was another, uh, this was, I mean, I heard this from a couple of people that I spoke to. Tomorrow, uh, an organization called Cobra Post is, uh, you know, announcing what they're calling a big scam in the financial sector. The announcement is tomorrow. So, uh, there was a fair bit of, in, in between all of this high promoter leverage and this and that and all of these things, there was a fair bit of talk about, well, who could they name? Oh, absolutely. Which are the companies. I mean, uh, so that was a big fear factor as well because the numbers that they're mentioning is some runs into tens of thousands of crores. So, uh, I wonder to know. I heard a very precise 33,000 crore. 33,000 crore. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, mean, the point is, uh, uh, one doesn't want to fear monger, which absolutely. is why we didn't repeat it. Uh, but uh, that was on the market's mind. You're absolutely right. And since they didn't call it a banking scam, but called it a financial scam, Correct. people were more worried whether it would be NBFC companies since, uh, uh, well, uh, we have nothing more to add on it. Correct. But uh, this, wa this was out there in the public uh, domain as a tweet and therefore merits uh, being put on the table. We have to take a break. But before that, uh, let's uh, leave you with some market opinion that we got from uh, Andrew Holland of Avindus Capital Alternative Strategies. And uh, of course, uh, we'll be back with our experts who will answer your questions. You know, there's a lot of headwinds out there, um, you know, to pull this index lower. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I'm of the view now that the US is in recession. Um, and it's who gets there quickest, China, the US, Europe or, or UK. And, uh, you know, that's still a headwind to, to, to come into a global market share. So, you know, we'll see our index fall on the, on the basis of that. Short term, I, I'm kind of, I'm still, I'm still a little bit more kind of negative. Um, but I see that there's going to give, throw up some very good buying opportunities. So I'm trying to be more optimistic on the buying opportunities, but I don't think these levels, I think the risk is to the downside, not to the upside. Bad day for bulls and uh, the market ending down, uh, I mean, 100 points plus. It was down a lot more and there was some recovery right at the close. We covered uh, three of the top five stories that we uh, bring to you every day. Deepan and Ashwini are answering questions, so let's move on to the fourth story. Earnings, and there were uh, quite a few today. Farm equipment major Escorts reported a healthy set of numbers for the third quarter. Top line grew close to 40% on a yearly basis. Profits too came in 50% higher than the same quarter last year. Margins, although, just missed street expectations. The stock saw some profit taking. It ended over 4% in the red. Okay, we've got some questions. Uh, Manoj Behera from Orissa has written with a question on Escorts. He says he has been holding... 100 shares of the company at 920 rupees each, says he's a long-term investor and wants to know if he should hold or sell. 
uh, well, uh, it was a good set of numbers, but uh, the stock didn't do much. What would you advise him, Deepan? 100 shares at 920 rupees each. I think it's best to hold on. Yeah. I think it's best to hold on. It's been a solid performer and at a time when auto industry companies are under stress, as cost to report such numbers is quite impressive and mm. we need to look a bit deeper into what exactly happened in the quarter. But by and large, it's a nice, good, secular, structural, long-term growth story. Farm equipment has got great potential in India and Escort certainly has done a lot of uh, internal uh, strategies to improve their performance, which is now paying off. So I would say uh, best to remain invested in Escorts and uh, maybe look for opportunities to perhaps average if the stock price corrects further from these levels. Okay. So he's sitting at a bit of a loss, but it's a great uh, strategy to average. That's the advice coming in. Uh, Ratnakar Bank also reported uh, its numbers. It was a healthy growth for the third quarter. Profit surged 35% year on year. And this is despite higher provisions. Net interest income uh, was ahead of street expectations and it came along with an improvement in asset quality. Both gross uh, NPAs and net NPAs fell on a quarterly basis. The stock ended close to 2% in the red. Canada Bank gave a mixed set of earnings for the third quarter. Profits came in at over 300 crores, which were below street expectations. Interest income too saw tepid growth. The bank reported the slowest loan growth in the past three quarters. Asset quality although improved despite an increase in credit costs. The stock ended 5% lower after posting the slowest loan growth in the, th in the last uh, three quarters. Uh, let's get a quick uh, view in. Uh, Ashwini, any thoughts on uh, Canada Bank, the way it's set up? I mean, actually... Uh, the PSU banking space? I think uh, PSU banks, the run is probably over for a while uh, because bond yield, etc., uh, could rise from here. So, my sense is that for the moment, uh, stay with uh, strong frontline stocks because uh, financials look like they could be having some more downside. Okay. Well, with that, uh, let's get to the last headline of the day. Tara Steel ended the day over a percent in the red. This after the steelmaker decided to sell its majority stake in its Southeast Asian business to China's HBIS Group for $327 million. The deal involves divestment of uh, Nat Steel and Tara Steel Thailand. Tara Steel said that it will consider selling its stake after three years. The new entity will have an enterprise value of $685 million and a debt of $150 million. This is what the management told us uh, during their conference call after the deal was announced. HBIS was keen to build a partnership with uh, Tata Steel and Tata Steel also felt that uh, we can optimize the value by uh, uh, you know, divesting 70% now and holding on to the balance 30% uh, uh, so that we can uh, take the benefit of any upside, if any, over the next few years. Okay, uh, that is Tata Steel and it's deleveraging uh, in uh, focus. I think it's a, a wrap uh, on this edition of Markets today. Uh, Ashwini and uh, Deepan, thank you very much, both of you, for being with us here on the show. Nata. Okay, um, before we say goodbye, let's also leave you with a slice of the conversation I had with the group chairman of Last and Tubro, A.M. Naik. Uh, A.M. Naik has just been decorated with the Padma Vibhushan, a rare honour for someone from India Inc., in the interview, he spoke about other things, about LNT, about uh, the acquisition that everyone believes they are going to make in the IT space. Listen. We have not made up our mind. Obviously, any good proposition in the market, we would be interested in. But Mindtree is not the only one. There are a number of other uh, companies available. No, in this case, we know that uh, one of the uh, shareholders wants to sell. And therefore, it is, uh, you know, something which may be higher up in your list, you would look at it seriously? As I said, any good proposal, we we'll look seriously. Okay. And if that is a good proposal, it will be part of a basket of mm -hmm. things we are looking at. So should we hear something sooner about this uh, uh, mine tree or any other IT company? Uh, should we hear about an acquisition I don't think year? I don't think I can say that now. Okay. But over two, three months, we are looking at something or the other to pinch. Okay. 